I think the challenge is, and a lot of people are super critical of them. I'm concerned about them. There is a bit where I have to listen to what I literally just said 10 minutes ago, Mm. which is there is a bit where Amazon is doing Amazon. And they're going to be large at scale and commoditize everything. And if you're building your business around NVIDIA, you're inviting in someone who is competing with you to extract value from the value chain. And you're in the long run setting yourself up to just be paying rents to to NVIDIA. And right. they don't want to be in that. And they weren't in that in the CPU era. Like, like Amazon really optimized their, their cost to serve in terms of regular computing is just better than everyone else because they invest, invested so much. People know about their Graviton chips, but they, they have this whole Nitro system, this whole like virtual system that is this extra chip that's attached to every server that actually runs the virtualization layer and all the networking, freeing, which means the core chips can do nothing but run virt- virtual machines. And so mm-hmm. every chip, they actually can run more virtual machines because they've offloaded to this Nitro system, which entailed a lot of upfront investment, a lot of cost but over time gives them a real sustainable advantage in sort of commodity serving. They want to get to something similar for sure with, with with GPUs and, and the, and so that's what they do. And so I can appreciate that now to go to Graviton Graviton is their arm chip. And they said something like half of all loads on AWS now run Graviton, or maybe it's half of new loads that new loads probably makes more sense. Uh, Graviton is, an interesting chip. Uh, there was one time we were spinning up a new thing for Passport um, and accidentally like forgot to select the right server and we were on Graviton. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, why is the performance so terrible? Like, oh, we're on Graviton. <laughs> uh, so the, but that was like Graviton too. Maybe it's gotten much better. But where Graviton is super important is there's a lot of things you use on AWS where, so the classic idea is you go to the cloud, you choose your server, you choose your database, you choose your storage, and then you can run whatever you want to do. And that's going to be, a consistent experience across the clouds. Now, Amazon can fit more on one chip because it's a natural system, but you're not really seeing that. But there's mm-hmm. lots of stuff on AWS where you go and you just use a service. It's like, oh, this will do that, like a notification service. It, I use this API and it sends notifications, you know, to smartphones and things along those lines or, or an email service. The compute under that is all abstracted away. All you, You're just getting a service with, with like, a, you know, whether it's going to work or not. All yeah. that stuff's running on Graviton because the Amazon's providing the service and they're optimizing to the kilt to run that as inexpensively as possible because then they can charge for the service and that the difference of the cost to serve and the cost to do, that's their margin. And they can make sort of a lot of money there. And that, I think, is the way to think about Trainium. I don't anticipate Trainium getting a lot of traction with third-party developers. Mm-hmm. But what Amazon wants to do is get away from a world of people running on GPUs or tr- or TPUs or Trainium and rather people using services that are powered by AI. So there's a few Amazon ones I'm actually uh, I'm very intrigued by. So they, they have like a, a, a call service one or a customer service service. They have this security service. And the reason I'm intrigued by those is because those are services that where Amazon is the first customer. So if you have to get a customer support AI generated service, Starting with the one used by the largest e-commerce retail on earth sounds like a pretty good place to start. All that, all those services are going to be running on Trainium. The point being that what, in that scenario, Amazon refines its approach to serving Amazon.com. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, so instead of me, well, no, instead of me building my own like AI powered customer service, where mm-hmm. I'm actually writing, like uh, trying to train foundation models and do all this sort of thing. I just use this API that Amazon has. They're doing all that. All the and their API gets is- better because they develop the experience serving Amazon.com. Is that right? That, yes. That AP- so the API is going to be good because they're building it for themselves for the most difficult use, you know, challenge as far as customer service goes on earth. Yeah. And also they are, that's their stack. So they can mm-hmm. heavily optimize it for Trainium. They can optimize the cost for it. They don't want in they they don't want the developer. If I go sign up for Amazon's customer service AI, the whole point is I don't care what it runs on. I yeah. just care whether the service works or not. 
That's where Tranium is focused on, I think, in the long run, is Amazon wants to get away from bare metal selling, and they're, they're going to buy a bunch of NVIDIA stuff because that's important to some people. But mm-hmm. where they want to get to is selling AI-powered services where you don't need to know what chip is underneath it, and that chip's going to be Tranium. Okay, so long term, their bet is that we are going to capitalize once AI is integrated into literally every piece yeah, of it's, modern yeah, it's life people, and commerce. People are not writing to the bare like they're not writing it on the bare metal. They're they're yeah. and this is like AWS by and large. You don't some stuff you might do at, at bare metal and the universe. Like, oh, I want to make sure that I'm cloud agnostic uh, and I can move anywhere. Um, beautiful dream never happens because what happens is you you like you build this. I'm going to run my own you know i'm gonna do everything myself so if i don't like amazon i can go to microsoft or go to google and then Mm -hmm. it's like one thing that's really hard to build and amazon has a service right there it's just one api call it's like yeah i'll just do this one right here Uh, because (laughs) i'll rewrite that if i need to go somewhere else and then suddenly you have like 25 of those and you're never leaving amazon anyway that's what they want to get to with ai it is is you instead of you doing it all yourself i want this thing that ai does i'm gonna get this service and all the details of how that's implemented doesn't matter to me. I'm just paying for it. And the way Amazon makes money is, oh, we serve that quite cheaply because our cost to serve is lower because we built up the infrastructure underneath it. And it's consistent with everything that made them dominant in the previous paradigm. So yeah, it makes they're doing sense what that Amazon running that playbook exactly. again. No, yeah. we, and so I don't hate it actually. You know, just because we're in the early era. era and mm-hmm. performance is what matters most. And so they are white knuckle. I think the white knuckle analogy is a good one. And they're white knuckling it effectively through like hater emails like Jeremy saying, you guys are losing an AI. What the hell are you doing? Your head's up your ass. But it like the strategy is actually fairly coherent. Is that it is? It is. Rendering? But there is a bit where I think, you know, Amazon AWS was the cloud of choice for all startups basically forever. Mm-hmm. And they, they were first and, and like just everything got built around that. There's sort of there are network effects. People are used to it. Like developers are comfortable with it and like very not not like hardcore network effects, but there there are some aspects there. And everything they're doing sounds great for established companies. Like they, they have this great thing. So they have the, their own Nova models, which seem to kind of suck. Yeah. But they're offering this service where you can actually go into the training of a model it'll get a checkpoint like 80 percent. it's 80 percent training and you can infuse your data so your data is not it's not rag where you do a model and it does a search of your data and tries to incorporate it or post training where you're trying to like shape the answers based on your specific no your data is actually in the model itself mm-hmm. and you can see the allure of that uh and you can see a world where look, we have a lot of data is no the best no but what we need is actually pretty basic and uh uh mediocre model infused with our data is better than a state-of-the-art model which by the way is super expensive uh you know with, with these other techniques i think it's a great approach it's an gr- approach that makes sense for established companies with a lot of data that are focused on low costs and not necessarily delivering differentiated user experience amazon's become the server of those companies like th- th- which is sort of what, what azure was which is nice the which, well, that's what the Azure future, was though yeah. the early cloud era like like Amazon dominated all the startups and the new companies and Azure got large by all the people. Microsoft's like, look, we're behind. You're even more behind. Come along with (laughs) us and and we'll sort of figure it out. Uh, If I were a startup, I can't imagine starting on AWS today. Like I would probably want to start on Google, um, maybe Microsoft and so then they lose that lock-in effect with the companies that are being launched today. It's like a venture world. effect. Like Amazon was like the greatest venture capitalist in the world in that every startup started on Amazon and paid Amazon. Well, Amazon would give away like credits or whatever. But if they went big, Amazon got way more, uh, yep. much bigger bills. Uh, and if they didn't, it had zero impact on Amazon. Phenomenal. Great place to be. I don't think they're going to be there in AI. 
Okay, they're missing that boat. Well, that's a, actually pretty interesting. The downsides and the potential opportunities. I love how for surprised Amazon. you are about how, how interesting. I, it might honestly, be. I said Tranium is beyond my realm of expertise. It's also was beyond my realm of interest. <laughs> but I'm very curious to <laughs> see embrace how it exuberance out. about everything, Andrew. <laughs> that's that right. The exuberance the is the word of the day. You said angst was going to be the word of the day. No, this is an, a podcast about exuberance, and we'll keep it moving. Uh, Missile 